<laughs> Alright guys, so if you've been watching my channel, you know this is the first week of my ball python breeding season. And I went through and I showed you guys all my pairs, my males, my females, which ones I was going to pair up. And there's one pair, and I kind of skimmed over it. I don't know if you caught it, but I'm pretty excited about it. And some of my viewers, they actually commented on it. And, and let me tell you, it is a really long-term project. As a matter of fact, it could take me the rest of my life to hit the odds on this combination. Take a look at this. I want to show you what I'm pairing up. I'm pairing up a clown female with an albino pied. And I just put these guys together just a few minutes ago, sprayed them down. And I want to show you. Let me let me pull these guys out. <laughs> They're almost too big for this tub. But they'll actually breed. And the female will actually lay eggs. I've seen people successfully breed ball pythons in a tub this size. So, so this is my albino pied, which is a double recessive. Uh, uh, two genes that are both recessive. And I'm reading it with a clown. And the clown is a recessive mutation as well. So when I breed them together, I'm going to get all babies that look normal. So take a look at this. I have one female normal left out of all my normals. I think I only have one normal, which is pretty incredible. They are pretty much all sold at my shows. And this one's this one's fired up. She's a little snapper. <laughs> so so this is what a this is what a normal looks like. So all the babies will look completely normal. And this is the cheapest, like a wild type, wild caught uh, ball python. And you know these these sell the cheapest at the show, but but actually when I breed these two together, they'll all look like this. But they'll they'll all carry one copy of the albino gene, one copy of the pi gene, which is these white splot white splotches in the albino, and then it'll have one copy of the clown gene. And you won't be able to tell that. Uh, look at that little snapper. <laughs> <laughs> he is, she is fired up. <laughs> but uh, but they'll all look like that, and they'll all carry one copy of the gene. You won't even know that they have that gene unless you know the breeding, you know the breeder, and you know um, uh, for sure. You know I know because I'm breeding them, and I'll know 100% sure. We call it 100% het for clown. 100% head for pied, 100% head for albino. So they will all be 100% heterozygous for all three. So, <clears throat> so in order to get the crown jewel, the crown jewel is actually mixing all three recessive genes together, which is the albino clown pied, and as far as I know, there is not one in existence today. And and for me to get an albino clown pied, it may take longer than I actually will live. <laughs> or pretty much towards the end of my life. So 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 if you breed, for example, if you breed uh, just a clown to a normal or any single gene recessive, you get babies that have one copy of of the recessive gene. And uh, look at that little bit of tail wag in there. <laughs> That's a little, uh, I think they're getting a little stimulated there. <laughs> I've never really seen that. That's kind of interesting. But so, so if you breed a clown to a normal <laughs> and you get uh, all normal babies that have one copy of the gene, you have to actually breed them together. And you only get a visual when you get two copies of the genes. And when, when, uh, when you breed two that are 100% head clowns together, your odds are one in four. So if you have 100% head clown male, 100% head clown female, you breed them together, one out of four babies will be a visual clown. And this girl is, <laughs> this girl looks like she's gonna fall off the tub here. <laughs> she's getting crazy. <laughs> I don't know what she's doing. And, and so if you have a double recessive, say for example, you bred the albino pied with a normal. And all the normal babies would be 100% het pied, 100% het albino. Double hets. And you bred those together, your odds of getting a visual double recessive is 1 in 16. 
and now when I read these guys together, uh, and so so the, the babies will be triple heads, and they'll they'll all carry three copies, one copy of each gene, and <laughs> that one's sticking his head underwater. <laughs> They're kind of freaking out in here. Uh, I've never actually watched ball pythons when I first pair them up. I usually just throw them in the tub and walk away. So this is kind of interesting. <laughs> so so when you actually have the triple heads, and you breed the triple heads together, so a triple head crossed with the triple head, the odds are 1 in 64. And keep in mind, that's just for one snake. And, and, and it's actually uh, either a male or a female. So, so if you want two snakes, the odds are 1 in 128. So I figure if I had, if I had one triple hat male, one triple hat female, say, say I sold them all and I just kept one of each, and I bred them together, and, and the female had six eggs per year on average, it would take me 22 years, <laughs> statistically, to hit a male and a female albino pied clown, which is a long time, <laughs> which is a really long time. And, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm 52 years old, and in 22 years old, I'll be 74. That's, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll definitely be a different man in 22 years. <laughs> Let me tell you. <laughs> so, so now I'm thinking, all right, how do I speed things up? Because I don't want to wait 22 years. To start breeding an albino pied clown with an albino pied clown, and there's actually there's actually ways to speed it up. And probably the fastest way to speed it up would be right over here. Buy another snake rack. <laughs> and what I'm talking about is so when I breed these guys together this year, hold back all the females. And then breed them again the next year. Hold back all the females. Breed them again the next year, and and in like you know three years, hopefully I'll have uh, you know ten or fifteen triple head females. And if I breed those to a couple males, now you know if I had ten females, <clears throat> and I'm getting you know six eggs per female, uh, and <laughs> and and I, I would get, I would get sixty eggs per year with ten females. So instead of waiting ten years for one female, I could wait one year with ten females. Of course, it's it's going to take a lot of resources to do that. So I'm thinking somewhere in the middle, there's kind of a sweet spot. Maybe hold back, you know, three or four or five females and and one male, and try to to hit the the triple. Uh, albino pied clown and once I hit that albino pied clown you know what I can do is I can unload all of my triple hats hold back just my albino pied clowns breed them together and I'm cranking out albino pied clowns <laughs> which is pretty cool and it'll take a long time to get there then normally once you once you hit a triple recessive like that for the first time the price is really high it's you know, I've seen people sell them for twenty thousand dollars, twenty-five thousand for the first ones that hit the market. Because hey, that snake took me twenty years to produce. If you want to get into the project, right? You know, you're buying time. Yeah, so, so basically, you're you're buying all my 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 weight and my resources and everything. But then, once you start breeding the albino pied clown to the albino pied clown, you get whole clutches. Of albino pie clowns, and the and the price comes down really, really fast. So, so that's kind of the project. It's it's a long term, and and sometimes you can beat the odds. You never know. Sometimes you can hit, get an albino pie clown. The first year I've seen people do triple heads, double heads, triple heads, and they hit it the first time. Sometimes the first year you could crank out a couple albino pie clowns, and the statistics are are kind of all over the place. <laughs> you never know if you're gonna if you're gonna hit it or not. <laughs> if I can keep these snakes from getting stuck somewhere. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> yeah, that's the other thing. You don't want them to to get hurt. So I'm gonna put these snakes away. 
So, <laughs> they're getting a little crazy. So, thanks for watching. I just thought I'd share one of the long-term projects that I'm working on. And I kind of just went over it real quick. And I didn't really uh, explain how long-term of a project that was. So, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.